Uh, hey, are we on? We're on? Hey, everybody. Oh, that's better. Phew. How you doing? Happy Sunday. Uh, what is it? December 3rd, 2023. Let's leave a little plaza as it flies. I'm out here. I made it out early afternoon here in Connecticut. And uh, there's some ducks cruising around over there. Maybe they'll come back around. I haven't been in the woods in a long time. So, I'm a little... It's a little strange being out here. You know, there's all leaves. All leaves, the, uh, the pond. The pond isn't... You know, I haven't been out here in so long. I kind of missed it. All the wildlife. And it just occurs to me. You know, what an ecosystem this place is. Wherever you live, you can just, you know, take take a walk around where you live and just be amazed by how much, like, how much life you can see, how much na nature is in your little environment. I mean, even if you live in a, in a city, you can, you can find little patches of, you know, a park or something, somewhere to go and find something alive, <laughs> you know, just look around, there's always something. It's kind of damp out here today, but at least it's not the middle of the night. I can kind of come out here and breathe, <sighs> and uh, how's everybody? Yeah, we uh, got down the, I'm still apartment hunting. But uh, Gray got down the Christmas decorations from the attic. And he's going to decorate the house. Maybe, you know, put up our tree that we keep up in the attic. And some years we've gotten a real tree when the boys were, you know, home and stuff. But not this year. Not this year. It's kind of too much of a transition. <sighs> we've got his mom's house we're still cl cleaning out. And there's just... You know, this feels like a simple year. So, uh, yeah, and it's already the first Sunday in Advent, looking at the readings today. It's just that kind of a day. It's kind of sleepy. I don't know whether I'm going to make minestrone soup when I come back, or just cave and eat the leftover pizza and a salad. <laughs> it's kind of like the kind of day when you feel like eating soup, you just don't feel like making it. So, I don't know, I have all these errands and stuff, running around doing banking and going to the DMV and all this stuff this week. And you know, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. We got themes. Themes in the readings today. This is how I roll. I usually, uh, I look at the, because I'm Catholic, well, I used to be. Well, I still am. I mean, once Catholic, you're always Catholic. When I, you know, growing up, and of course, Catholic school and all these years, that's how I roll. And I still do it, you know? I, I look at the, the Bible readings for the week, and I get an energy reading. You know, now that I'm into, like, my own spirituality and stuff, I, I take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, you know, and I piece it all together. And, but I still go, you know, I think there's a lot of wisdom in, in these readings. And they... Nine times out of ten, nine and a half times out of ten, they give me a good read on the energy of the week. I also do astrology and human design and a lot of other things. It's interesting. Um, so yeah, there's this, there's this, uh, there's this theme. Uh, Isaiah, well, first uh, letter of Paul to the Corinthians, and and we're into the Gospel of Mark. And uh, there's these themes about being on watch. Being on guard and alert, um, you know, there's this theme of like, we're not worthy. <laughs> like, you know, Santa, Santa's watching, right? That's it. That's what you know. Those of us Gen X, we grew up with our parents, you know, telling us, you better be good, you know, you better be, you better not pout. 
you better, you know, because because Santa's watching you, and he's making a list, and he's checking it twice, right? So this is God. This is Source, Creator, right? He made us. We, we come from the universe, right? We come from the stars. The stars. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, it's, it's this feeling of, you know, when, when you were a kid, it seems like Christmas will never get here, you know? And then you grow up and you have kids and it's like, I have no time to get ready for Christmas. There's too much to do, right? And then, then your kids kind of grow up a little bit. And it's just like, you know, then you're like, you know, why did I used to fill up all my time with these, with these things? Like, why did, you know, why did I feel the need to, um, to be so busy? Know, to like run around. My mother, usually growing up, she was the kind of mom, she'd have all the gifts, you know, bought and wrapped and under the bed by the first week in December. I was not that kind of mom. My mother, she used to get like tasteful, you know, wrap, she'd get a few rolls of like the, this, you know, very classy, plain paper. And then she'd get like raffia or, you know, natural kind of, you know, she'd go to Christmas tree shop when they existed, before they closed. And she'd get, you know, very tasteful wrap, and she'd wrap everybody's presents, except, you know, maybe the, you know, yeah. Well, in the old days, um, she would get the, the, you know, the same wrap. She would get like fun wrapping paper, you know, but then, but then when I grew up a little bit and when the boys were young, she, she would do everything and she'd get like all the same paper. Everybody would get the same and she'd have it all wrapped. My mother was Capricorn. She'd have it all wrapped and meticulously written out and all her cards done, everything, you know, in bags, ready to go. First week in December, she shamed me. I, I, there's no way I can live up to that, you know? Um, you know, I, just before I forget, I wore my special shirt. I got this at Savers. So, I want to show you. Look what I got. MTV. <laughs> I got my MTV shirt on. Anyway, I just had to show that. Because I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy that my turtleneck fits underneath it because I get cold. Um, so, yeah. So... You know, I felt unworthy next to my mother. She was, she had a level of perfection, you know, growing up that I, I thought I would never achieve. And I, you know, I haven't, but now I've realized that I'm okay. I did all right. And, you know, I did some things even that my kids, that were good for my kids, that my mother, you know, wouldn't do. Like she wouldn't try things if there was a chance that she might fail at it. Or would she be less than perfect at something she wouldn't even attempt? Versus, I have no such inhibitions. You know, I've, I've had a lot of fails over the years. But that's where my stories come from, you know? Like, um, oh, but there was this one year, the year that, uh, that I interviewed Bob Steele, the, the radio guy for the newspaper in high school. I was like 15, 14, 15 sophomore year. I was 15. And uh, so Bob Steele, he sent the, the DJ, the radio DJ on the AM station back in, uh, I don't know, what, what was it? 81. 81? 80? 80? No. 81? Uh, no. 80. Because I was 15. He uh, sent her a book, uh, signed his copy of his new book, and sent it to my mother and said, wrap it up. Put it somewhere she won't find it. I talk about this in the Zazu Plaza. And uh, so she did. She put, she slipped it under the living room couch, which she never, she never put anything under there. But she knew that I was always snooping around under her bed and shaking all my presents, you know. So she slipped it under there and forgot about it. Christmas afternoon, Bob Steele calls my house and asks my mother, how did she like the book? And my mother goes, <gasps> horror realizes that it's still underneath the couch. 
it was a rare moment when I got to see my mother absolutely, not just somewhat humiliated, but completely humiliated in front of this celebrity, local celebrity, no less. And so I got on the phone and he's like, he's like, how'd you like the book? And I said, what book? And, and uh, so my mother just completely goes red, completely red in the face. She runs under the couch, gets the book, brings it back. And I said, oh, I have it now. <laughs> my mother forgot to give it to me. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, we're all imperfect beings, right? Despite our very best efforts, you know, we want everything to be perfect for Christmas when Jesus comes. We want everything, to, and it's never going to be. It never was. But it was perfect in its imperfection. But I didn't know that then. I had to, you know, I had to let a few years go by and, you know, till I was kind to myself, you know. We, we have everything we need. We all have our perfect gifts. We don't need anything. We don't lack anything, right? But, but we think we do, you know. We go around and we try to, you know, do all these things that we think you know, will make people like us better. And I'll give to this, give to that, help this one, help that one. Do we really, it's, it's empty to God because that's not what we're supposed to be doing. It's kind of like, you know, when you ring the bell and you don't hear it, it's hollow, right? Like in the Polar Express, the kids, people ring the bell and they don't hear it because it's empty, devoid of love. It's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to keep that bell alive in our heads. We're supposed to not let ourselves get, you know, tarnished by life. But, you know, we just have to have faith, right? No matter what. Because we have, we're, we're destined. We're destined to be who we will be, you know? And uh, it's, it's just ourselves. It's up to us to figure out how we're uniquely called to show up, you know? And it's sort of like, um, you know, when you, like, you're a kid and you did something wrong, right? But maybe you broke a, your mom's, you know, face or you, um, you t we turned away from God. We've done something. And you know how when you did you do something like maybe you say you gossip about somebody and then you run into them and you can't quite look them in the eye, right? Because you were just talking crap about them to somebody else and you think that they can tell. And they probably can tell. Well, what they can tell is that you're not looking them in the eye because you know you talk crap about them. <laughs> or you, you know, um, your conscience is bothering you. You know, I was watching the old Brady Bunch shows because they give me a lot of comfort. And there was always like, you know, like Marsha accepting a date from, from the popular guy and forgot that she was going to go out with the schmucky guy. You know, she always, already was going to go out with Charlie and like Doug asked her out, you know. So she, she couldn't quite, she had to break it off with Charlie, but she wasn't honest about it. She kind of lied to him and then... You know, and then she gets hit by the football in the nose by her brothers, you know, and then Marsha's nose is all, you know. <laughs> that was a good one. I really, I did remember that one. Um, then she keeps reliving it in her head, you know, the time she gets hit by the, by the football. She keeps running it over in her head. It's kind of like the readings today, you know. Um, it's like, it's like you keep going back at that time and you, you know, you, you try to figure out how you can make it not happen. <laughs> There's this distorted sense of time. Or like when you're a kid and, you know, Christmas just will never get there. It's like you've been waiting and wait. Oh my God, when are we, when is it going to come? When's it going to come? You know, it's that same feeling in the, uh, the readings today. There's this, uh, this guy, the Lord of the Manor, he goes on he goes abroad, he goes on a trip, and he leaves the servant, the gatekeeper, on guard, on watch. But 
the gatekeeper, you know, they don't know when he's coming back, right? So it's kind of like Santa, you know, We're, who knows? You gotta go to sleep before Santa can come. The watch pot never boils. It's like, you know, he's not gonna come when, just because you're looking for him, you know? God's not gonna bring you what you want when you want it. And you might not even get what you want. You get what is coming to you. <laughs> Based on what you put out there, you'll, you'll get that back. Um, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like that, you know, or you're playing hide and seek when you're a kid, you know, and it's your turn to hide. And you don't know if, the per you know, is the person going to find me? And how long am I going to be here? And how long can I stay in this little cubby or this little, in, you know, this little hiding place? You know, on the one hand, you're afraid of getting found. But on the other hand, you're afraid of not getting found. Because then you'll be there forever, you know? You'll forget about it. It's kind of like that. So, yeah, it's that weird kind of energy, you know? Um, say, like, well, you know, but, you know, kids, it's so funny, our, you know, our mentality when we're a kid versus an adult. And even as an adult, you know, at different ages and different stages, we have, you know, um, we have, you know, sometimes we can be really afraid of the future. It's kind of like, it's like the more we know about life, you know, the harder it is to kind of just let go, live in the moment and have faith, right? That God is going to catch us, that God's going to, you know, when we're little kids, we're helpless, right? Our parents have to take care of us, right? Because we can't go out and make a living and, you know, when we're babies and stuff. Even, you know, through early adolescence, we're dependent on our parents. Then you get to, you get to the point, though, where it's like, you know, you, you're... You become an adult or a young adult, you know, and then sometimes you, you, you uh, keep waiting for somebody to take care of you. You know, there's this dependence, this codependence. Either we, you know, we get to be the 40s, 50s, and either we're really addicted to helping other people and we need to be needed, right? There's people like that. And then there's people who, you know, they need another person. Like, they need to be completed by another person. And then other people don't need anybody, you know. And, uh, and they're fine, you know. And then some other people who just need, you know, just to have a little taste of, you know, all the energies. You know, maybe they don't need one person in particular. They need a lot of different people in their life. I'm kind of one of those people, you know? Um, so I'm pretty independent. That's the way I've sort of, you know, grown up. It's, it's up to us to determine what, what kind of person we are and, uh, you know, how we show up and how we feel most alive. And that's, that's how, you know, where astrology, human design, all that stuff comes into play. Getting to know yourself and what, what makes you feel alive. And then, um, so that's, that's how, that's how we can be of best service in the world, to figure out, you know, what kind of being am I? And other people are useful in that you can, you know, see yourself reflected in, in them. And, and, uh, you know, but you, you have to do the work. You have to go and hide and wait to be found. You, know, you have to have the faith. You have to keep that light burning, that you know, inner flame. We're in Sagittarius season. It's all about the fire, right? The, you have to, Sagittarius, you know, likes to go on from one thing to the next. You know, always that quest for knowledge, 
you know, the, 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 um, the archer trying to um, you know, reach the target, like, uh, always trying to, um, you know, having, having those, uh, they can be a little self-righteous sometimes, if you know any Sagittarians, they, they think, you know, they're on, like, the quest <laughs> Don Quixote out tilting at windmills, you know, the life is the great adventure. I have three planets in Sagittarius, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. And um, so, you know, I have a lot of that energy. It's restless. You can't sit still. You want to keep going. That's how December is. December is Sag season up until the end. So it's kind of like, you know, it's uh, da -da 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 a... <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I was a restless kid. I couldn't sit still for anything. But, you know, at the, at the lower end of it, we can kind of be judge, judgy, right? People are like, oh, who does she think she is, you know? Just high and mighty in her ivory tower. But, you know, uh, so that brings me to the song of the week. When the stars align, you know, that's when, that's when things happen, when you just give up, you know, you give up trying to make things happen, or force them, right? So the song, uh, let's see, Minute by Minute by the Doobie Brothers. This came out, okay, it was released December 1st, 1978, 45 years ago, this week. It was their eighth album by the same title, Minute by Minute. Michael McDonald and Lester Abrams wrote this song. I was in eighth grade, the fall of eighth grade. Uh, so by the spring of 79, well, it spent 87 weeks, 87 weeks on the Billboard 200. Uh, it went triple platinum. Spring of 79, it was a, a bestseller. It's number one in April 79, or no, that was uh, what, what a Fool Believes went number one. This one, I don't think it got up that high, but the album won, you know, and I think one of the songs won Grammys, all kinds of Grammys. So, um, yeah, what a fool. Minute by minute by minute, I keep holding on, you know that one? I keep holding on. Minute by minute, it's like a clock ticking. It's like in my childhood home, freaking clocks in every room. There must have been 20 clocks in my house, all set to different times. It was uh, maddening, to say the least. There was cl there were clocks everywhere. Clocks, clocks, clocks. I can I can tune that out now. You know, I realize, you know, Gray, he's got he's got well we have our dining room clock, which is so loud. I can get to the point where I don't even want to have a clock anymore, you know? Creepy. Tick, tick, tick. But sometimes I can, you know, the guys have all these clocks, like alarm clocks and stuff, and they're all ticking. Like, it drives you nuts. If you stop and think about it, you know, but, you know, I just, I tune it out because after all those years of clockage, I can't, you know, I realized at a young age that if I let that stuff get to me, you know, I have to live here. So I, <laughs> I learned to t tune things out that would, you know, other people probably couldn't. Yeah, along with a lot of other things. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. awfully damp out here. So, yeah, Doobie Brothers, they they were big in the late 70s. Uh, those of us who grew up with them, minute by minute, what a fool believes. It was very smooth kind of music. Yeah, it's a sleepy day. I guess I'm going to go back and thaw out my hands and my feet, <laughs> tie up all the loose ends, 
I mean, I found I found a uh, a realtor to help me find a little apartment for myself. As I'll probably be moving out in January, Get my own little place somewhere, and uh, so there'll be that to look forward to. So, in the meantime, Christmas preparations. Hope you're having. Hope you have a wonderful holiday season and uh, you know I'll check in with you next week right now it's kind of dreary out here it's kind of nice to be back in the woods oh here comes somebody oh, here comes a kid a kid twirling a stick I better go I'll talk to you next week be back for next week Desert Plaz, signing out. Take care, stay dry, and uh, be on the watch.